Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about when the darkness come. Welcome back to another Steam free to play review. So, my first impressions of this game before playing it was like, oh it's a Stanley Parable game, you have different decisions and you get different, vastly different like endings based off it. Which is not exactly correct, so... Excuse me. You don't get many decisions. And you get a few decisions, but they don't seem to be... It seems like they're all leading to the same true ending, which will be included in my walkthrough with the other two endings that are in the game. But this is a walking simulator type game with platforming elements. <laughs> and I'm telling you, these platforming elements, even though they're not many in this game, are so challenging. There's a part where you're supposed to walk on this path, right? And it says, follow the light. But when you see the light, that basically means you're about to fall off the path. <laughs> and if you can't tell which side the light is on of you, like there's one point towards the end where the light looks like it's right in the middle of the screen where you're at, and you have to step to the left, but if you step to the right, you have to start all over. <laughs> Not all the way over, but you have to start that part over. And it was so frustrating. Which is good, it was challenging. It, it took some thinking to figure out what I was actually, how the best way to do it. And I had to take my time and actually think about what I was doing. It felt super, felt super rewarding when I finished. I was like, yes, I did it. Next platforming thing that was awesome. There was a thing where you had these light platforms, and you can't see the top because they're dark. And you only know they're there because there's a light, and then when the light stops, that's where you know the top is, and you don't know how big it is until you're on top of it moving around. So you can fall off. And some of them are misleading, so they make you want to jump farther than where it actually is, and then you'll just fall off anyways. That part killed my soul. <laughs> but besides that, narration's great, story is phenomenal, it is so good, I love the story in this game. At first I was like, eh, it's alright, he's just breaking the fourth wall a little bit. If you played uh, Doki Doki Literature Club, and you know how Monica at the end like, gets super self-aware and like starts asking you about your computer and all kinds of craziness and starts getting your name and stuff this game does that i don't know where it got that username from but it was my first and middle initial in the like the last part of the start of my last name i was like what the heck and then at one part well i'm not gonna spoil it at all but it's it gets it like somehow gets information off your computer which it warns you about before you start playing the game so don't be too shocked even though i some of it i don't know how they pulled here like exactly how they made that work, but it was really neat. Definitely with how the story was going. There are some scary parts in this game. Like, the creatures aren't like super scary looking once you get used to them, but when you can't really see them because you're in a super dark place... Oh my god. I got jump scared so many times. It was awful. It was actually awesome because I was like, this is exciting. Like, this makes me... When they told me not to turn around, I was like, I'm not turning around, I'm going. You don't have to tell me not to turn around. I'm, I'm running. Except for on the second playthrough when I was going... Uh, one thing that's kind of annoying is, once you do the first playthrough, you have to play through it again before you get to the true ending playthrough. Which isn't super bad because the dialogue, there's, they change things. Like the narr the subtitles and words and stuff change and they know that you're playing it again. But a lot of the mechanics are the same and you have to do the same platforming things that took you forever the first time. Luckily, I think you get better at it. I got better at it anyways. I kind of did on like my first try. The second time around. And they do, they change the environment elements so like when you're playing through the first time, everything is so dark that it's really hard to get through your first playthrough. But there's like a reason for it, and you'll see when you go to your second playthrough, and it feels... Everything feels super rewarding in this game as you progress. Like, it's challenging, and the further you get, the more rewarding it feels. It's so good. Uh, and the ending was great. I really enjoyed it. I wish that there was one plot point I wish they would have spent a little bit more time on and not on who the female is in the game because they talk about her a lot and you know she's doing things to help you but they don't really explain too much about her why you're there besides you playing the game well I guess it's really immersive because it's really talking about you and you're the one that's there playing the game because you chose to play it so I think that's good 
but you never find out who she is, who she was, or anything like that. You get little like plots and pieces, but it doesn't give you much of a backstory. Which, if you assume you are the main character, which you are, I guess you wouldn't just be gifted that information in the first place. I didn't see anything to get it though. Another thing that bothered me, I don't know if this is a glitch or if there's any way to fix it, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but once you get the true ending, you can't go back and play it again, which is weird. <laughs> Maybe you can uninstall it and play again, but or there's probably some way to do it. But because of that, I missed a bad ending because I kept doing the good ending part instead of the bad ending. I don't even know if there was a bad ending because I was just, I didn't want to do it <laughs> until I like get completed the game all the way the way it was supposed to be. So yeah, that that's that's kind of a bummer, but whew, it was an experience though. It felt super challenging and it took me forever to do. And I will include the walkthrough, which has everything in it that I did. I got like 79% of the achievements or something. And some of those achievements, if you don't play it again, you can't get them because you have to... You have like six choices, they don't really matter. But each of them give you an achievement. So I'd have to play through the game six times, and by the third time I got the true ending. So I couldn't get those anymore, <laughs> unless I figured out some way to play it again. But... This game is going to get a 9 out of 10. It's a super unique experience, and I would highly recommend anyone to play it. That's all. That's This is like the epitome of what I think a 9 should be. It's not got like the greatest gameplay, but everything it does, it does super well. It's probably the best walking simulator I've ever played. I didn't play Stanley Parable, I only knew about it, and I watched other people play it. So that could probably be a better walking simulator, but this was a phenomenal experience. And it gets in your head and it knows things. At some points he's talking to me and he's thinking, he's telling me what I'm thinking. And I'm like, oh my god, get out of my head, stop. Oh, it was a great game though. But if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And thanks for all the support you guys have shown so far. It really means a lot. Bye.